We tell ourselves all this bullshit stories. I'm a foreigner, I'm an immigrant. They diagnose me with ADD and OCD. So you end up developing this false identity and then you travel through life looking for evidence to reinforce that false identity. That is a story that you tell yourself. What you don't realize is you could rewrite your story. And when you do, you will go out and look in the world and find evidence to reinforce that new identity of the higher self. Y'all go to the gym and you work out, you build your muscles. Why would you think that you don't need resistance for your mental and emotional muscles? We need to be fucked up. The process of unfucking ourselves is self-mastery. But I wanna inspire you to start working out first, start eating right first, because when you have absolute control of your physiology, something magical happens. You become your own purpose, because the same things that are required to get lean and jacked and to stay lean and jacked, that's what's required to build a multi-million dollar business. Now, I don't know why you're here, but I do know why I'm here. I'm here for that little boy who escaped Soviet Union, came to the United States, and lived in Section 8 housing. I'm here for that little boy who was molested by two older boys over and over again until we escaped. I'm here for that little boy who was told that you're never gonna become anything. You're a foreigner, you're an immigrant, go back to your own fucking country, your parents are taking our jobs. That's me. And I grew up with a chip on my shoulder, rage in my eyes and fire in my belly because I knew I was gonna prove everybody wrong, from school teachers, to the neighborhood thugs, to the fucked up people in Section 8 housing, who would scare the fuck out of me when I was six, seven, eight, nine years old until I learned how to fight and defend myself. Now that little boy grew up to be quite the man, if you don't mind me saying so. Because today, I'm the founder of Fit Body Bootcamp, an international franchise, truly supplements, multi-million dollar coaching programs, investor in a whole bunch of shit, including a ranch with Dan Fleischman, but what I'm here to tell you is that there's three things that you need to focus on if you're in this arena. And those three things have transformed my life. And if there's one gift I can leave you with, it is those three things. And it starts off by you getting sick and tired of the version of yourself that showed up here. If I had it my way, there would be a mass suicide. What I mean by that is, you would kill the version of you that came here today, and the version of you that goes home is someone completely different, an elevated person, a person that's transcended, a person that's connected to consciousness, a person that has meaning, purpose, significance, and a purpose that uses their money as a weapon, like all the speakers that got up here and committed money and instantly raised $100,000 for that little girl. The version of you that showed up here must stay here. The version of you that goes home has to be the elevated, transcended 2.0 version, yes? All right then, let's get going. So if you know anything about me, my family and I, we escaped Soviet Union. I'm an immigrant, lived in Section 8 housing. I'm probably one of, I may be the only guy here that's been in a police helicopter chase and I wasn't in the police helicopter, I was in the getaway car. As you can imagine, I didn't get away. Buena Park PD caught me, and that was the beginning of a new phase of life for me. That's when I decided to become a personal trainer. That's when I decided to look for mentors. That's when I decided that I was no longer gonna be a shit bag, and that I was gonna be a servant for humanity. I had racked up so much karmic debt it didn't matter how many cars we carjacked, it didn't matter how many homes we robbed, I somehow always found a way to be in debt. I found myself looking over my shoulder, wondering who's gonna jack me, who's gonna try and kill me. And I share that with you because if you've never lived that way, it's a scary way to live. And as I became a personal trainer, I realized that all of my clients are wealthy, they have money, they carry themselves differently. They use their money for good, just like we did up here. And I realized that money is a superpower. 
So of the three things that I told you that you're gonna take away, thing number one is money. Do not be allergic to money. I don't know about you, but I can tell you that money solves the problem of not having money, and that's a damn good problem to solve. Now, I donate to Shriners Children's Hospital, Toys for Tots, and I've got 97 kids adopted through Compassion International. That wasn't because of my good looks. Every year, we donate seven figures to those three foundations and charities, and it makes me feel damn good. It heals the little child in me who was molested, who was told to get the fuck out of this country. I don't know what your story is, but I can tell you that money can solve a lot of the problems that you're having. If you came here just to feel good, to look for motivation, inspiration, to snap a picture and put it on Instagram, I feel sorry for you. You should walk out of here with these three things and then go and execute like a motherfucker over the next 12 months to change who you are. You got that? Everyone's coming up and everyone's got a story just like I do. The problem is your story you're holding on to. See, I rewrote my story and that's the story that I wanna tell you. I thought that I was supposed to be blue collar. I thought that because I'm an immigrant that I'm always supposed to just get by. I didn't realize that money is just a byproduct of adding value and solving problems. The more problems you can solve, the more money you will make. The more value that you can add, the more money you will make. It's as simple as that. There is no the rich. I am the rich. I am the rich. There is no white collar people who are better than you. You're better than them if you're willing to execute on the stuff that you take away from here. You know, a long time ago, I'm 49 now, I was six years old when we came to the United States. By the time I was nine years old, my sister, who's significantly older than me, she's 16 years older than me, she kind of raised me, she's like a mom to me. So you could imagine, when we come to the United States, three years go by, I'm nine years old, my sister comes home crying one day, telling my dad, I don't want to work at that pizzeria anymore. She worked at a pizzeria, she was making like $2.50 under the table per hour. Turns out the pizzeria owner was a real douchebag. He would make suggestions, he would touch her inappropriately, and my dad, unfortunately, said you have to keep working there, we need the money so we can get out of the Section 8 housing that we lived in. Now, night after night, my sister would come home crying. And at nine years old, I had no idea how I could help her. But I remember walking up to her one day and saying, one day I'm gonna be so rich that you'll never have to work again. Well, 15 years ago, I retired my sister. She, yeah. My sister gets paid a lot of money to do a lot of nothing, and I love it that way. Understand this, that money is a weapon. You could do a lot of good with money. It's not elusive, it's not just for the rich, it's not for some people who have the secret code. You add value, you solve problems in exchange for money. And the more sophisticated and complex the problems that you solve, the more money you will make. Some of you have made this fucking thing into rocket science because you like to complicate it for yourself because when you complicate money, it becomes elusive. Money's simple. But you need singularity of focus to make your monies. You need to develop skills or solutions to problems to make money. You need to be consistent because you motherfuckers out there think that your one year of effort should produce my 10 years of results. It doesn't work that way. And so just because social media has conditioned you for quick, fast gratification doesn't mean that's how the world works. You go and earn your money. You solve the problems, then you create multiple income streams, then you create income streams that are automated, as in subscription and reoccurring. You look at all seven of my companies, we sell once and we make money over and over and over again. I love that model. From my supplement company, even the apparel company. You're probably wondering, how do we do that with an apparel company? We get as many people that pay us $29 a month to give them access to early drops 
ongoing 15% 50, 50, uh, discount. And of course, they get a 100-day guarantee on the apparel that they buy from Fuel Will Hunt. I don't know any other apparel company offering that. But I share that with you because if you think that the business model that you have does not lend itself to reoccurring revenue, subscription, monthly reoccurring profits, you're wrong. And I wanna impress that money factor on you. And once I can impress that on you, we're gonna move on to the second M, which is meaning. You could have all the money in the world, but if you don't have a sense of meaning, purpose, significance, it's over. It's over. I can tell you that I use my money for good. I'm able to help causes and charities that I believe in. I'm able to get up here with my friends and donate to a cause that I believe in. If you have an absence of meaning, here's what happens to you. Better yet, I'm gonna give you a great story about my dog, Cookie, where meaning is concerned. About seven years ago, we rescued this dog. Her name is Cookie. She's part German Shepherd, part Mastiff, a big dog, big dog. She was six months old at the time, and when we rescued her, she was already 95 pounds. The owners didn't want her, they were gonna take her to the pound. So we took her in, but we've never had a big dog in our family. So we got a dog trainer to come in and start working with Cookie because Cookie would pull everybody, my kids and everybody, all over the property. And we needed this dog to develop some manners. So after three weeks of working with Cookie, this dog trainer had Cookie dialed in. I mean, she knew how to twirl, she knew how to sit, she knew how to survey the whole property. She had manners. But the dog trainer said, hey, come here. I gotta tell you something about your dog. I said, what's that? She said, well, your dog, because she's part German Shepherd, she needs to have a sense of purpose, meaning. If she doesn't, she's gonna start digging holes in your life, all over your backyard. I'm like, what do you mean? She goes, well, dogs like this have to have a sense of purpose and meaning, and they have to have a routine. They have to feel like they're shepherding your kids and protecting them. They have to feel like they're protecting your property. They have to know that every morning they're going out and playing catch with you. It has to be predictable for this dog. If you don't have predictability in the form of routine and meaning and purpose for her, she will start digging holes in your backyard. And I said, how come? She said, well, the dog will start getting anxious and depressed and will start giving itself a sense of purpose by digging holes in your yard. And in that moment, I realized we're no different than a dog. When you start getting bored, when you don't have purpose, meaning, significance in your life, what do you do? You start digging holes in your life. You're smoking weed, drinking booze, jacking off to pornography, whatever it is you're doing. And I'm not here to judge you because odds are I can check off every box. But that's the 1.0 version of me. But in the absence of meaning and purpose, you will absolutely start digging holes in your life. You start binge watching television, you start gambling, you start playing video games and sleeping in, and all of a sudden you're anxious and depressed. In case you're wondering what anxiety and depression is for 99.9% .9 of you, because some knucklehead is always like, well, I have clinical depression. Shut the fuck up. So there's your point one for your clinical depression. The other 99.9% .9 of you, if you're anxious and depressed, it's your conscience trying to get a hold of you and your attention to say, hey, motherfucker, you're not doing what I've put you on this planet to do. You get that, right? Like there's no one else that's gonna come and drag you out of bed. It is your conscience. Who is your conscience? It is higher self. I don't care if it's God that you believe in, Allah, Buddha, or a fucking purple unicorn. There is a higher power, universal consciousness, and we all know it, we all feel it, you know what the right thing to do is, but you don't do it. And so you start suffering with anxiety and depression. And what is the fastest way to deal with that? Run away from it, mask it, escape from it with alcohol, weed, social media, screen sucking as though you're fucking Mark Zuckerberg. You know who should be checking their fucking social media first thing in the morning? Zuckerberg. Because he wants to know if fucking Facebook and Instagram are still up. The fuck are you checking your Instagram for? 
you ought to get up and start chasing your money and figuring out something meaningful to do with it, yes? So then if we've got the money and the meaning checked off, what's left? The third M, mastery, self-mastery, mastery of self. Now, I don't know about you guys and gals, but I was not born with the owner's manual. Like my mom and dad, they didn't hand me an owner's manual and go, here you go, here's, here's how your thoughts, feelings, emotions, and body operates. In fact, my parents, God bless them, they did the best they could with what they knew, what, what they had, what the experiences that they had. So your parents have fucked you up. School teachers have fucked you up. If you're anything like me, you've been molested or beaten up or abused in some way, you've been fucked up. Good, good for you. Guess what that is? Resistance, resistance. We need resistance. Y'all go to the gym and you work out, you build your muscles. Why would you think that you don't need resistance for your mental and emotional muscles? We need to be fucked up, but then the process of unfucking ourselves is self-mastery, self-development, connecting with higher self. Otherwise, all that money and meaning goes away. You look at anyone who squanders their money, you're like, man, they had so much talent. They had everything going for them. They were helping so many charities. What happened to them? Oh, oh, I see. They upper limited. They hit the glass ceiling in their life because they didn't heal through their traumas. They didn't work through their shit. They hit the upper ceiling. They felt weird about it because they don't feel like they belong there. They felt like an imposter. And they self-sabotage to bring themselves back down to a familiar discomfort. That's all that is. I spent 15 fucking months working with a therapist 11 years ago because I knew I was so fucked up that all I kept doing is building businesses, getting to a certain level, and then sabotaging myself. And that led to sabotaging my health, sabotaging my relationship, sabotaging my friendships, everything around me. Until I realized the common denominator is not my family, it's not my friends, not my business partners, it's me. Obviously there's something up with me. I wish I could tell you that I had enough wherewithal to just figure that out and go to a therapist. So it wasn't how that worked. At 38 years old, I had a massive panic attack. I had such a bad panic attack, I thought I was having a heart attack. And the only thing that was running through my mind in that moment, because my daughter Chloe was seven years old and my son was nine, I was like, man, I'm 38 and I'm dying. Who's gonna walk Chloe down the aisle? That was a goal of mine. Who's gonna teach my son Andrew to be a modern day knight? That was a commitment that I had made to him. When I went to the doctor, thankfully I thought I survived a heart attack. I went to the doctor, I'm like, dude, I think I had a heart attack. You gotta figure out what the fuck is wrong with me. Doctor does all the EKG tests, puts me on the treadmill, puts all the things on my chest. He's like, dude, you're fine. But I think you had an anxiety attack. I'm like, well, that makes sense because I was taking Vicodin every night, a handful of it to fall asleep, and then I'd wake up and I'd shotgun Red Bull, drink coffee, and have a handful of Adderall to start my day. Every time I was focused on my work, I always found distractions. I never had singularity of focus. I was the guy that was always staying up late, always unprepared. And surprise, surprise, motherfuckers, I couldn't figure out why my businesses kept crashing around me. And so the doctor puts me on Xanax, and this is a fun story that I wanna share with you because four days on Xanax, I start drooling out the side of my mouth, I'm not having any sense of anxiety, zero. But I also have no desire to work, I have no desire to, I have no desire to do anything creative. So I call the doctor up, I'm like, hey man, this Xanax, it's not working for me. I got businesses to build. He goes, well, then you might wanna try talk therapy. If you wanna cope with your stress and anxiety, try talk therapy. So of course, being type A, I went, found a great therapist. His name is Kevin Downing. If any of you live in Southern California, you want a great therapist, look up Kevin Downing, Turning Point, um, Turning Point Counseling. I don't make any money from him. He's just a good human. I've referred over 60 people to him and he will change your life. 
So I tell, I tell Kevin, he's this older dude, I want you to imagine Einstein, white hair, older guy, but no eyebrows. So it took like three or four sessions to figure out like something's up with your face. And one day I'm like, bro, you've got no eyebrows. And he's like, it took you four sessions to realize that. So I said, Kevin, how long is it gonna take for you to help me get over this anxiety? He goes, I don't know, maybe a month or two. Well, 15 months later, we're talking about me being molested. We're talking about getting beat up by gangs in Section 8 housing. And I realized in that moment, I had so many limiting beliefs about myself. I felt broken, I felt unlovable, I had rage, shame, confusion. Could you imagine feeling shame, rage, confusion, broken, unlovable, like you could just be discarded and thrown away and then trying to start a family, trying to build business partnerships, trying to scale a fitness franchise? Good luck. No surprise, everything kept crashing around me. And so I'm here to tell you that if you don't commit yourself to self-mastery, where does self-mastery start? Well, it starts with the physical self. Every single one of you know, especially if you're men, you got weight to lose, you got abs to develop, you gotta get to your fight weight. You know this. You can't be a fighter jet. If you're in this room, you wanna aspire to be a fighter jet, yet you're treating your body like a crop duster. And that's the reality. A crop duster never goes to war. A crop duster never goes to battle. Fighter jets do, and fighter jets are treated very differently. You gotta start with your body. Get your workouts in. Burn the fat. Build the muscle. Why? Why am I so focused on that where self-mastery is concerned? Shouldn't I read books on stoicism, Bedros? Shouldn't I go work with a the therapist first? No, you silly fuck, you shouldn't, and here's why. It is easy to read a book. It is no different than sitting here and gathering information all day long like you have. You can read a book and go, oh yeah, yeah, Outwitting the Devil, I read that. Psycho-Cybernetics, I read that. How many books have you read? How many events have you gone to? How many courses have you bought? How many influencers do you follow? Even cats like David Goggins, who's gonna come and take the stage and rock this fucking room. But you haven't done the thing that you need to do. So if you get into the gym and you start working out consistently, you get your ass in the kitchen and you figure out what your macros are supposed to be. I'm 49 years old and I've got abs, motherfucker. I see dudes half my age yesterday at the VIP party. They're like, yeah, man, I gotta, I gotta start working out. When? I got seven companies, a family. Yeah, it feels good to do that. Oh, you ought to see the veins in my traps, gnarly. Gnarly. Anyways, we're not here from the veins of my traps or my glorious abs. You guys are awesome. But for real, man, every single one of you, men and women, you gotta get into the gym and work out. You gotta figure out what your macros are and eat clean. Because if you're emotionally eating like I used to, imagine being the CEO of a fitness franchise and making selfie videos from the neck up because you were so embarrassed about your body. That was me. What a fucking hypocrite. Now, I work out twice a day. Every time I work out, I'm taking a selfie in the mirror and posting it. I fucking love it. And at 49, I get to inspire others. But I wanna inspire you to start working out first, start eating right first, because when you have absolute control of your physiology, something magical happens. When you can control your body, all of a sudden you climb out of that depression. All of a sudden, you climb out of that anxiety. Why is that? Because you're like, well, if I don't have a sense of purpose, where should I start? You become your own purpose. Your body becomes your purpose. You are on the quest to develop the most idealized body for yourself. You know what kind of body you respect, that you admire, that you look up to. Be that guy. Like, what's stopping you? And if you could do that, then you can start working with the therapist. You can start reading the books. Because the same things that are required to get lean and jacked and to stay lean and jacked, focus, 
discipline, consistency, and delayed gratification, that's what's required to build a multi-million dollar business. It is. Same exact things, right? I got the cats sitting up front saying, you're right. And these are all badass, high-level entrepreneurs. That is, that's a formula. I'm giving you the fucking cheat code to making money and having meaning. And it starts with self-mastery. And I'm telling you, if you were like me, like, I see so many of you that are young and eager and excited. If you were anything like me, you would take this to heart right now. The story that you were telling yourself now, this happened to me, I can't, they broke up, I don't know how, what if, they laughed at me, what if I get judged, what if it fails again? We tell ourselves all this bullshit stories. I used to tell myself that. I'm a foreigner, I'm an immigrant. They diagnosed me with ADD and OCD. I don't know how. So you end up developing this false identity and then you travel through life looking for evidence to reinforce that false identity. That is a story that you tell yourself. What you don't realize is all the people that fucked you up, at some point when you were a kid, they had the pen. See, every single one of us, I figure like when we're born, there's this book of life with blank pages and Bedros has all these pages to fill out. But our parents do the best they can. Our siblings do the best they can. Aunts, uncles, school teachers. You get to a point where you're at now, where you made a decision to get a ticket and come here. You can take the pen back and realize there are blank pages in your book of life that you could rewrite your story and develop a new identity. And when you do, you will go out and look in the world and find evidence to reinforce that new identity of the higher self. Do I have your commitment? Good, my job is done, thank you.